Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Santa. Anyway, so uh, yes, yes. So what we're doing tonight? We are looking at multi-track studio, multi-track audio recorder. Sorry, <clears throat> inside of uh, Nano Studio. So things we can do with. Uh, multi-track inside Nano Studio. Nano Studio doesn't allow for audio tracks to be recorded into it only via the sampler, and that doesn't give you enough time. So there are some things we can do to kind of just bear with me a sec, kind of get around it a little bit, but um, not in kind of ways that you would expect. So I'm just waiting for my uh, thing to uh, stream to appear, so I can see who's here and things. It's really actually quite funny because all the emojis appear first before anything else. Uh, right, okay, so... Oh, no, 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 that will not do. That will not do. Oh, no, I don't have to fix that, yes. Um, okay, so who's here? Our bad guy. Hi! Uh, hi, Samuel. Uh, just thinking Dan Baker's Ghostbusters recreation. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, excellent. Hi, Paul. Uh, Sean. Is, uh, what, is, is he here? Is, he, is Paul a music man here? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> here we have a new project we're going to start. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of things if I have time. And if not, we can always do another video. So you can't record audio in into Nano Studio from external sources, even into even into multi-track. It's, it's an impossible at the moment. Impossible, I say. Not possible to do it. Uh, so is Paul here? Is Paul the music man here? Is Paul here? Is Paul here? Okay, Paul, are you here? Paul? Paul? Anyway, so, uh, okay, we're just going to call this, we're just going to, let's just call this uh, MTR. Testing, testing. MTR testing. Hi, Paul. Yes, yes. So we'll create this new thing. Okay, so I have... And I, I need to check something in Cubasis. So I'm going to import a, a track that's almost completely finished um, into Nano. So here we go. Okay, that's fine. So cool beans. Okay, so the, what I'm going to do for, this, the, for the first part of this video, and if I get into get time to do something else as well, I will. So we won't go too, too deeply into this, so I can show you the other bits as well, I think. Uh, but here's, here's a good thing to do. If you've got a project, inside another door that's nearly finished or something ready to mix down or anything really. So it says you've got a track from years ago, from a million years ago, and you like Nano Studios workflow. Now I just want to check something in Cubasis here. And you just want to see if, um, I want to see something about right, 80 BPM. So that's fine. I just couldn't remember. So the first thing I'm going to do here with this new project, I'm going to set the tempo already to 80 BPM, which is the project tempo of, of, of the track. Now, this track you're going to hear is, this is only basic, the backing track. And I I guess I might fit well finish it inside Nana Studio. But, you know, for now, I just want to show you what my, my idea is, sort of thing, if you like. So 80 BPM, we have nothing here. And instead of opening Nano in an effect slot, for starters, I'm just going to open, I'm going to do this, audio unit instrument track, because I don't want to add anything to Nano Studio at the moment. All I want Nano Studio to do, uh, all I want multi-track to do for me is play the play the file inside of NS2, which would have been impossible to do this. I could not have recorded what's on this inside NS2. So if we can tap on this now and we can go to um, here and I'll find multi-track. And there is a vol, and we shall just it's it it'll just load as a default track. So what I'm going to do for starters is we can get rid of the thing. Now you'll notice as well that it's at 120. So the first thing I want to do is go song, and I'm going to go new song, and I'm going to call this uh, Hockney mixes. This is a track uh, that will eventually have lyrics by Joe for Hockney and it will end up on the next Doug and Colin album. <coughs> but it's at 80 BPM. So you see now our, our, our tempo here has changed to 80 BPM. That's cool banal move. And uh, our song will be 44.1, 44.1 because that's how I record everything. So 
Right, okay, so now what I'm going to do is we go into the audio peel. You see there was nothing there, it's a new song, it's all very clean and tidy. But we're going to do this, we're going to open up our files app here. And uh, when I can actually get to the files app. Yeah, no, there it is. Right, so pick that up and drop it there. And the first thing you'll see is Hockney. Now this is in audio share, I just exported it from Cubasis into audio share, okay. So we're just going to pick it up here like this. And I'm going to stick it into my audio pool for now. Okay. And it's it's loaded in with the tag already as Hockney. And what I'm just going to do is go to track one here. And I'm just going to drop it into at the, the very beginning of track one like this. Uh, and I'll move it along. Right, so like. So now you'll see it's got a four bar <coughs> loop of nothing at the beginning yeah a one bar count of nothing so this is very cool so what the point of this is that now i can start to use uh anything that's inside ns2 to record if i like like instruments and stuff like that so you know or whatever so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable host sync. Host sync is fabulous in NS2 with uh, multitrack, as you will find out shortly when we start to do some cool stuff within multi within NS2 and with multitrack. So I think what I'm going to do as well, because otherwise it's going to get it's going to get too fiddly me points. And let me go to my settings here and go to um, accessibility, touch, touch, switch on assistive touch. So I've got my mouse thing there and dink 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 right so okay so now host sync is on so when i play inside um nano studio this will play and because at the moment you will you will see as normal nano is set not set to loop i don't think so now that's multi-track See what happens? So Nano is set to loop, but we can turn loop off. Okay, so let's just do that, shall we? Let's just turn, stop, stop it again, Doug. Let me just turn the looping uh, loop off. So I just want to play along with the track, basically. Uh, so all I need to do now is, we're not using this mode yet, I'm just using it to control things inside what it. So I've set my song length to this, I've set this to this, I've set a new song up and called it Hockney. And if we go back to here and I play, start there now. So this is playing that track and it's it's a long track, you know, it's a full size song. So we're not gonna play it all. Okay, so you'll see that our host sync just returns to if we if we're at any point inside inside if we press stop and then rewind it rewinds it for us with host sync switched on. So, so you're playing an audio mix down from Cubases. That's right. Yes, yes, I am playing an audio. Uh, I am playing an audio track from Cubases, which is already more or less the backing track of the track. So I just wanted to add some bits over it, but I wanted to show you that you could bring any mix in, any audio file. It doesn't matter how long it is, into NS2 for you to further uh, play with. So, for instance, let's say I, um, I want some Obsidian. We'll do this. <clears throat> let's mix that down. Uh, 
And I wanted to add, just just for argument's sake, I wanted to add those strings to my my track sort of thing. So all I need to do now is press, well, I can play along with it first, so just to make sure I'm okay. <clears throat> So that's how you do that. So all you need to do is basically play along and record over what you've got. Of course, you can still set your loop points and stuff inside Nano Studio, but the point is there that if you want to get a track in, a complete track, you can you can just bring it straight in via, via the audio pool, and then you can just record into it. Now, of course, if I want to, I could record those strings onto track two, but I'm not going to. I want to show you what we're going to do with some other stuff. So that's that's basically that. Just showing you how to get. You can get a full, complete, finished track project or whatever, or another audio, audio or multi-track project in there as well for you to uh, sort of carry on adding to via thingy. So you could just you could ease just easily just use Nano in Cubase as, as an interrupt. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. You can do anything you like. That's that. This is the point, isn't it? However, what I'm about to do, you can't do nowhere except here. Ping. Right. So this is this is very cool. I, I love this. And this is fantastic. And this is because Nano's transport is epic. So we've done that. So that's how we do a complete mix sort of thing. We've got we've done our what's it and it's all very cool. Brilliant. Right. So done deal. Now, now, here we go. <laughs> let's do a new tr let's do a new project so we'll just save this one okay with we'll save save that one save empty off death thing and i'm going to start a new project so new untitled eight um we'll call this one mtr looping for want of a better for want of a better thing for this this thing so we'll create that and get rid of my chord sheet there um okay so now here we go what we're going to do let's first of all i want to do this, this is important for me i'm going to open up a au instrument i'm going to double tap on that there and i'm going to use pure synth boing pure synth platinum we'll just double tap that there and it'll load in a sec as soon as it does we can crack on when it eventually loads you know there it is Let's see the full AU, and for I'm just gonna do this for now. I just I know what I want to do, so we're gonna go factory presets. I'm gonna go down to um, voices and choir. We'll start with this B scat one here. <laughs> Right, so I'm playing that with the MIDI keyboard. Right, brilliant. So all we need to do now is we go to our mixer and there's our pure synth there. Yes, strike the like people, strike the like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add audio effects there. We're going to add audio effects there. We're going to go to external. We're going to go to um, and we're going to find multi-track and it's raw like this. And we're going to load it now. Now have multi-track one. Okay. Okay. Now, because, because I want to start a new track now. Okay. So we're going to leave all the settings at 120. So 120, 120, 120 is the tempo is fine for me. But if I wanted to change the tempo, Inside Nano, of course, as soon as I hit, hit a new song, it's going to change the tempo in, in multi-track to suit. Song. New song. Uh, what did we say? We'll just call this looping. Looping for... For fun. <laughs> looping for fun. Okay. Right, 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 right. So... Who knows where that's coming from? Right, I know what it is. Now, it was just the uh, synth. 
Right, so um, let's go back. Right now, first of all, I'm 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 here. I've set my song up. I'm on the right tempo, but we can't hear. We can't hear anything because we have to monitor. So hit monitor. <laughs> So now we've we've got multi-track monitoring track one of um, pure synth. Okay, I'm, and I am totally happy with that sound. We can go and have a look at the mixer. Now this is cool. So you'll see that the four there's a four bar loop there. That's fine. We're just going to leave it at four bars. And because we've got, we have to just make sure we know what we're doing. So if we can go to full screen mode there, we want host sync on, okay? Host sync on. And what this does is because unlike AUM, which isn't really a, a door, but because multi-track, uh, because N Nana Studio 2 is a door, multi-track be re behaves itself with um, Nana Studio's um, what's it? Transport. So if we watch this, watch. Let's play. You'll watch it. It'll get to. It'll get to number four, and then it'll jump back to the beginning. Or, or what? Oh, number five. Sorry, and then jump back to the beginning. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four bars, and it'll jump back to the beginning. Right. Awesome. Now I'm not armed to record, and I haven't right. And I haven't pressed record, so that's good. So if we can stop that. Rewind it there, and this time I'm going to arm record, and I'm arming it for track one. Okay, guys, trust me, this is epic. You'll love this. Not the not the piece of music. You'll probably hate that, but the actual what's it? Hey, Shazam, the iPad producer. His folks. Hello, Shazam. So let's do this. We'll get a four bar counting. <laughs> Although that wasn't a deliberate mistake, I'm going to cut that, and I'm actually going to I'm going to tidy up as well. I'm going to tidy because I my my schoolboy error there was I want this to record in stereo, so I'm going to hit stereo. But you notice at the moment I don't have to have loop on or anything like that. I haven't got remote engaged. Just using host sync. That's important. Just host sync. So this is brilliant, right? So so far today we've learned that you can import an entire track in and then overdub it in Nano just like you would in any door then. And now, just seeing door was live. Thanks, Shazam. Okay, so now I've engaged stereo. I don't need to worry about punch in, punch out. Because, do you know why? Because Nano Studios Transport's taking care of all that for me. Do you know what I mean? So what we're going to do is we're going to count in again. And <laughs> seriously. Now you see, I've got to go back and I've got to delete that information though, like that. Go back to my, sorry, my um, multi-track studio. Engage arm record again. Because otherwise, because I've just recorded that. And this is important why, right? So make sure you get it right. Here we go. <laughs> That. And there's the multi track playing that now. So I've just changed the sound in multi track. So now we've got a different sound, but we haven't had to uh, we haven't had to open another pure synth. Let's go back to, uh, and of course, what we could do is we could make any adjustments to our MIDI. We could just go to our, or we could have, but we can't now, of course. <laughs> but if we'd made any mistakes prior to it actually deleting the MIDI, we could have done that. Before we even recorded in that, actually. 
So let's arm number two this time. Monitors on, stereos on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is record so let's stop that and i'm going to record some more midi now as well it's very cool it's going to automatically quantize highlight productions listen this is automatically going to quantize to 16th i might be playing slightly off has as a metronome too it does indeed but we don't need that with that delete and now I don't know why I can't hear it in multi-track why didn't that record did I not have record switched on right okay fine arm um, for record probably my fault that was so hang on a sec armed armed monitor on I did there. Before I practiced. <laughs> record now we've got uh th we've got this we've got this loop playing now we've got a loop excuse me i don't want to actually record anything else now into multi-track but i do want it to loop over those first but uh first four bars now here's a couple of things to know right we can we can go now into into remote and what remote has done is engaged a loop point around those five things which corresponds to this so if we if we play this now, if we could go back and go. Okay, so you see it stops, right? It, it just it carries on to the next, but because we've got we've got our. Um, uh, what's it playing and because we're on hosts we don't need hosting on because we're on remote it's following the next the next set of information that i've given it so i'm going to take this and i'm going to put it back to the beginning there right i'm going to leave it on that and i'm going to hit loop so this is what will happen now mm -hmm. 
Now, I don't know if any of you noticed that, right? But we're playing 5 to 8 here and 1 to 5 inside. And um, what's it? Now, just sit back for the people and you take a second to realise how incredible and amazing this could be. <laughs> this means that now we can start to record extra things on here that have nothing to do with the first set of tracks. Of course, it, of course, I mean, you know, I'm just, I just get dead enthusiastic about stuff like this, but I think this is epic. So if we go again and we look at our, our, our multi-track, we have to go into our effects, obviously, because it's sitting in an effects slot. And let's just, I'm going to just save song as well, so we're, we're all sort of done and dusted. We've got remote switched on and we've got loop on, okay? So it doesn't now matter where it is on the timeline inside Nano Studio 2. This is going to play as long as your loop is engaged. Now, we can do all the cool stuff as well, right? So we could just say, let's take that one track and then duplicate it like it was too, there was too highlighted there, so we can cut that one. Actually, no, we'll leave it. And we'll move it, so we'll leave it out there. And then we'll duplicate the, we'll duplicate, just highlight this one. We'll duplicate that one as well. But we'll put this one, um, just a bit to highlight and hold. I'll just put that there. I just want to give you an idea of some of the cool stuff you can do. So we're still in our, we've still got our loop point set there. Okay, so but we could extend our loop point now to there. So the second time it runs round, it's going to drop out the center part. Which means that now Let's get a sound you can hear. So this is Obsidian, right? We can go to Obsidian and we can do a... That's a little bit loud, isn't it? But we can turn that down in the mix. Hang on a sec. So, right, so we've got this. So this is cool. So, also, so, so far, there's nothing spectacularly different but what's what happens when we do this right okay so if we're gonna we're gonna hit record i'm just gonna record four bars of that obsidian bass there if i go all the way back to the beginning now Obsidian isn't going to play, but our loop is still going to play that we recorded over our first ever bars, you know? So until you actually go back, and uh, until you actually go back, I'm not going to go on much longer, guys, because my chest is hurting me. But if if we go get not like heart attack pain or anything, <laughs> just in case you're worried, just me cough. But I really wanted to show you this, so you, so that you know what you can do. You can go in, you can go to your. Uh, I don't know why it's done that, but you can go to your. I can actually get rid of that bit because it's nothing to do with me. What it, but. As long as you you can then you can arrange this any way you like. Do you know what I mean? You can arrange it like you could have this there or whatever, or you could just have it to loop there, 
or you don't have to have it looping at all. You can just have it playing along like so you can go all the way back to the beginning. And that, in fact, actually, we could go all the way back to the beginning. We could move now. We Let's go with this. We could move this bass further out the way like that. Let's have that loop there. Of course, you don't have to have it loop at all. So all we've got going on now is we've got all these pure synth tracks that we don't need because we've saved our song. We could open multi-track in a track on its own now. Get rid of pure or use it for something else. But now you see we've got we're gonna have two bars of our multi. Let's we can do this from you can see because that bar nine to uh, thirteen, that obsidian base is gonna come in, and we've got this like this here. So <clears throat> we've got remote switched on. We're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. Um, actually, let's switch remote off. No, it doesn't matter because I haven't got um my loop switched on so and then our our this second section here the, the vocal bit we recorded that will only come in when the bass does now let's go back to the beginning actually because oh, i've done switched off that loop <laughs> And now, because we haven't got loop engaged, we've just got our, our obsidian continually looping on its own. So you see what I mean? You can build up all this cool stuff as an intros or things that come in in the middle. You can choose exactly where that loop is going to play. You can move stuff around inside multi-track. Multi, uh, multi you know, you can arrange this stuff how you like. You can record up to eight tracks. You could open another one and record another eight tracks. You can mix, if we mix down this project now here, like this, like if we go into our audio pool and we go, right, okay, so, okay, let's, um, let's mix, mix down. Okay, and this one now, this one where it says mix down, this is going to be the full thing. So if we wanted to now get rid of like, we could go like, let's do a, um or select and let's go just select all and let's just delete uh cut those sorry into our audio pool let me take my mix down now let me put that on track one and there's our complete which it what's it there's our mix down that we've just done that we can now mess with and we've freed up a load of more tracks by mixing down that one track <laughs> And it's still going to work exactly how we set it up previous because it's, it's using Nano Studios Transport. And they can bring your drums in now. very cool so guys there you go I, I hope you enjoyed that and i hope you find it useful both instances like at the beginning <coughs> excuse me of bringing in a, of bringing in a complete full track and then just recording over it like uh like we did let's just save this now save song always save song save song lots and lots and lots and we'll save our project as well, save. And then we'll load project, um, what, 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 what was it called? And what was it called, MTR testing, I think it was. This is the one with the actual looping. <laughs> And of course we could just record over that. Doug Colin and Joe, MS. This is Doug Colin and Joe music by MS. <laughs> Can't 
Can you apply effects in multi-track? Yes. Yes, you can. Well, you will see. You will see it has. Um, you have some very basic effects in multi-track. Okay, but the, the the cool thing is right. The the the, the point of multi-track is being able to use a, a an audio recorder in things that really wouldn't normally allow it. NS2 doesn't allow audio tracks to be recorded yet, so another a good way of actually getting the whole thing in is like this. Because you can't do it any other way, but Obsidian won't let you do it. The sample length isn't long enough, nor, nor is Slate, which is fair enough, because that's not what they are. So now you can. And AUM won't let you record audio into it like that, like neither. You can record it and then bring it back in elsewhere, but that's... It's comp it's not complicated, but it's convoluted. This is much quicker. But Paul has supplied you with a few effects. But however, I like this idea, right? Let's say we've got this. Okay, so I'm gonna save this song. Check this out, right? New song. You'll like this, guys. Before we before we go, <laughs> let me save save song. So song save successfully, right? And we know it's called what was it called? NTR testing. Okay, that's brilliant. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go out of. Um, what's it? I'm just gonna save the song. Uh, and we're gonna go into AUM. This is cool. Let me wipe my screen because I'm my OCD is cracking me up with all these fingerprints. Do you like the fact that you can't really see my reflection anymore as well? I'm sure it was annoying some people, so I had to fit, find a new camera angle trick. Right. Anyway, you'll like this. Watch this. Let's open one audio track. Okay, actually, let's open. No, let's one will do. <clears throat> We're gonna open up. Um, now you probably won't have used it like this neither, but you know this is this is pretty cool. So let's open up um, search for multi-track <clears throat> instrument. Now, what did I say? What was it? 80, 80 BPM. I'll take it down to eighty BPM. Although this really isn't necessary now, but eighty BPM. So we'll go this. We'll go. Load song, where are we? And what was it called? I'm not sure if it was Hockney, was it? So we'll go audio pool and it's in use. And I think it was this one. Let me just double double check. And we so we host sync is on, so we can just play it in AUM. Okay, cool. So check this out, right? This is epic. Multitracks in our main thing, right? So what we shall do here is we'll go to audio unit extension. We shall go to actually I'll do it, I'll do it like this. We'll go um, TB. Oh no, what's it called? Real bus. Real, real bus. We're going to put a real bus there, right? Then all we need to do because multitrack is an AUV three. We'll put uh, another multitrack here, like this multitrack. And oh, come on. I need to learn to spell. Multi track in this slot here. Now, what all I want to do is I'm also going to. I'm going to go song. I'm going to go new song. I'm going to call this uh, Real Bus Hockney for the purposes of the. For the purposes of the demo. Hock, Hockney. Right, cool beans. Okay. So this is real bus hockney. We can see our tempo was automatically synced to 80, which is what we want. Right, so we're going to arm track one like this. And we're going to hit monitor. Actually, I'm just going to hit monitor because all I want to do is monitor the input. Now, because multi-track is an effect, it works like an effect. It hears audio coming from elsewhere. If I play this now, and I hit monitor, you'll hit, you'll see that it's monitoring through track one. Which means that I can go into real bus now.
and start using any effects that I like. So we could go like, okay, so let's go tape flange. Right? So that means, okay, I mean, we, we could add another effect as well, actually. Let's say, like, we want to add, um, a, a, I, I don't know, a, uh, what doesn't really matter, does it? Let's say we want to add a, a 6144. We need to get that 6144 now just behind there. So what we do is swipe right, <laughs> swipe right, and move it up like that, and drop it in place. And then we can put EQ on that mix, so let's do that. Let's check this. Okay, so now all we've got to do is enable host sync and we can record our new mix via, via just the one track like this. And we could go and make adjustments. Or even do some fun stuff. you may have noticed that my biggest mistake there was not engaging stereo but that's you know that's the kind of thing that you've got to be aware of let's do it again but let, let's make it a little bit more interesting let's change the effect a little bit there to something uh, a little bit more drastic let's really Let's go with the uh, comp. <laughs> Let's go with tape trouble. Oh no, my tape recorder has been destroyed. But my tape recorder has had it. But at least we're going to record in stereo. Actually, if we were using the compact tape setting, that might be actually quite nice. But anyway, we're all linked up. We're all ready to go. Engage stereo monitoring on. Excellent stuff. Rebound it to the beginning and. Now we're recording that all that cool stuff into our second version of multi-track here. M&S Music by Doug and Joe and Colin. <laughs> and actually what we shall do is we'll do the very cool trick now. Oh no, the power's gone. So here is our here is our mix. So let's we we can disengage host sync. Let's just have a listen to our 
So we, we know that, like, let's close that for a sec. We know that this is our complete track sort of thing. We can disengage hosting for that as well. We can just play it. And take our effects out sort of thing. Hey, Colin. Hey, Colin, this is a, this is a new track from the album. You haven't heard yet. This is Hockney. Hockney. Yes, it's m and music by Doug Cullen and Joe. Yes. <laughs> I can't keep saying that. It just sounds like an m and advert to me. You've got to be careful you don't say s and advert, don't you? Right. Anyway, the, here's my point. Here's my point. That We know that's okay. That's cool beans. Um, we can just drop our effect back in now. We don't need to worry about it because it's an effect. It's still sending audio to our output. However, we could put this into a another track if we wanted to sort of thing. But for the for the the, the purposes of speed, <coughs> hang on. The purposes of gosh, dust. The purposes of speed. I shall now play this with the affected version. And it, see, there's all that tape damage. Should have the tape stop at the end as well. So there you go, guys. Um, <clears throat> there's different different ways you can use it in Nano, different ways you could put it in AUM and apply a mic. Also, bearing in mind as well, if you had like eight, eight tracks or so, you could do the mix down like that without having to actually mix it down into multi-track. You could just mix it down whilst playing it through a bunch of effects or something, you know? So I think... Um, you know, I think it's it, it just does things that that weren't easy to do before, um, without having to worry too much, you know, about anything. It's it makes life a lot easier. Anyway, thanks, Paul. Um, thanks, Sai. Thanks, Joe. Why? Thanks. I can't even say. Um. So. Yeah, brilliant. Um, there you go. I don't really know what else to say. Like, you know, I always enjoyed the video anyway. And uh, I enjoyed the stuff in NS2 and things like that as well. So it should be should be very cool beans. I have no idea what's going on tomorrow. Not a clue. Um, I know that it is music night with Doug and Colin on Thursday. On Thursday. <laughs> And I think, well, I'm not sure what we're doing, but uh, I think, no, Sally Caster 3, I think it is. Well, it's Sally Caster and Denks and Clay, I think it is. The Mechanical Girl Takes Revenge. That's what we'll be playing. And I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure as well, but I think M Lydia, L M Lydia, Lydia, <laughs> Lydia, our daughter, will be joining me for the, some of the live stream. Anyway, so she says, <coughs> oh, God. Oh, right. Okay. Right. I'm off. Guys, thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, hopefully I see you very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Colin, for joining. And Marcus. Hello, Marcus. The Mechanical Girl on Halloween. 
Um, yes, actually, you're right. Yes. The mechanical girl takes revenge on Halloween. It is Halloween, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Super. Um, tea is ready, Doug. Yes, indeed. Right. All right. I'll see you later, guys. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.